welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Claire. Uh, if you've been here before, hello, um, welcome back. If you haven't been here before, this is a slightly different video to what I normally do. Uh, I normally film the Flossy podcast, uh, which is where I just sit down, chat about what I'm making, show you it on the needles and and yeah, it's super fun. I really enjoy it. So please do check out those videos if you're interested in that. Um, today, I thought I'd film something slightly different. Um, I had something in my brain that I wanted to try and I thought instead of just trying it and then waiting for the podcast and then being like, I did this, um, I thought it might be fun to kind of film as I go along. I don't think it's going to be a very long or... <laughs> I'm saying I'm so cursing it, <laughs> hopefully I'm not a super stressful like little project that I'm doing so I thought it might be fun to film it as I go along, show you in real time what I'm doing and um, and yeah so kind of bring you along for the ride sort of a thing. So let's chat about what the project is because it involves this sweater which I'm wearing. This is um, one of my vanilla heirloom sweaters. I really love this pattern if you watch the podcast you know I talk about it a lot. I've knit three of the, this is one of three of these type of sweaters that I've knit. I've done them slightly different each time but I knit this one at the time because I had a specific idea for it in mind um, which kind of fell by the wayside um, a little bit but it's kind of crept back into my brain um, over the past couple of weeks. And I've been like, mm, I really want to give that a go. So it involves the elbows. <laughs> so I thought it'd be really fun because this is like a really, it's a really nice basic sweater pattern, um, which I find really exciting because if you do like to modify things a little bit or add your own twist to things, it gives this really lovely blank canvas to kind of play around with things a bit. And I thought it'd be really nice to do something to the elbows to reinforce them for one. Um, the yarn I've used for this is absolutely lovely. This is Knitting for Olives Double Soft Merino and it is very soft and beautiful and it's like a, I don't know if you can see that, there we go. So it's like a chain construction and it's so floofy and very soft um, but it does make when it's knit up, it actually makes quite a flat fabric um, and I am a little bit, because I'm quite hard on things um, and I do this a lot and I have a wooden, like quite a rough wooden table downstairs I like to work on so I don't want to um, wear out the elbow uh, too quickly. You can always mend things but I thought it'd be fun to reinforce it and I was going back and forth for quite a while. I was going to do like a duplicate stitch type thing, but lately I keep seeing the most beautiful projects popping up um, on for sweaters and things on my Pinterest for embroidered flowers um, and especially using the same yarn to embroider the flowers with. So it's like a really lovely, like, it's just all about the texture, the colour isn't different, it's just a lovely texture and I thought that would be so fun to do like a little sleeve reinforcement patch just like here, just have like two little crops of um, flowers springing up. Um, so yeah, so I thought I'd give it a go and I thought I'd share it with you. <laughs> Who knows, maybe I'll start filming it and start doing it. It's going to be a nightmare and I will never show this to anyone. <laughs> but hopefully not. Hopefully it'll be good. It'll turn out really nicely. And and yeah, let's embroider some flowers on my sweater. So, before I get giddy and start doing embroidering things, there is one thing I have to address, which is, if you watch my podcast, you probably know this already, you know that I knit the sleeves two completely different lengths. I don't know what happened. I'll be completely honest, I don't know how I did it. Um, it's actually quite a significant difference. I don't know. Um, until when I was going to leave it completely plain, I actually, I kind of thought, meh, whatever. 
no one even if people notice what does it really matter uh i was just gonna leave it as is however if i am gonna put things on the sleeves i feel like it's gonna make that issue even more obvious so the first thing before we get started is i need to rework one of the sleeves and i think after wearing it quite a bit I know it looks like I just did this one way too short, but I actually really like the fit of this. I actually get, um, my hands are naturally quite cool, but I like it that way. I find if I have my sleeves, anything around my wrist too warm, and my hands will get, it's like they go from cold to a million degrees, like really quickly, and then I can't do anything if my hands are too hot. I always wanna be knitting, so. I think what I'm going to do is I just really like the look and the fit of the shorter sleeve which makes this actually pretty easy. I'm going to rip back and finish the sleeve off on this before we do anything else. So that's what I'm going to do first. And now even <laughs> they're looking good they're not looking wonky anymore um like i said i wasn't too worried to be honest before but i think doing the elbow treatment to them is going it could have maybe looked a little weird because once i unraveled it it was significantly off <laughs> so these are all good and even so all that we have to do now is to actually embroider the elbows which I've never done before. <laughs> I've never really done any kind of embroidery. I've done cross stitch, but nothing like this. Um, so I'm excited to try it. Uh, so what I've done is I've knit up a little practice swatch before I'm just let loose on the actual sleeves. Um, I thought it might be a good idea to do a little bit of practicing. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I was thinking it might be nice to do um, sort of a French knot stitch for the center and then pit then do the petals around it. But I don't know if that might look a bit fussy and also I don't know if I can do a French knot stitch. <laughs> so I'm gonna try it, see how it looks. And if it's looking a bit fussy, I might just strip it back and just do only petals and, and just keep it quite simple. So that's the next step. I'm gonna start practicing on this and see how it goes. So I'm pretty happy with how these are looking. I mean, 
they're not perfect um, by a long shot, but I wasn't really looking for perfection. It's the first time I'm doing it. So I think for a first try, it's pretty good. And they're looking exactly how I was thinking they would, like plump little flowers. So <laughs> I'm gonna call that a win. And I can soon start embroidering the actual sleeves. Now, what I am gonna do before I start um, is I'm gonna try on the sweater see where my elbows are actually landed on the sleeves and just mark them with a pin and then I'm going to do like a little template I think. I'm going to do a quick paper template of exactly how big because I only want to do like a little small area. I don't want a huge big lump of a flower patch so I thought it might be a good idea to try and make myself a little guide and I think the best way of doing that is to cut out a paper template and then do a really quick running stitch around it just so I have a visual guide of where I'm going to embroider the actual flowers on the sleeves. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm not going to be super precise when it comes to the size and the shape of the template that I'm doing and where the embroidery is going to go, but I think I do want it to be roughly around, let's say, two and a half inches, maybe three inches wide, I think will be better. So let's do, let's start off with three and then I can always take some length off. And I think it'll be nice if it was like just slightly longer. So more like three and a half inches, I guess. And then from there, we can see how that looks when I put the template on. And if I want to chop a little bit off. So I think this looks like a pretty good size. Um, so I'm going to do a running stitch around it in this brighter yellow. Um, then I can see roughly where I need to embroider. And this doesn't have to be super precise because the flowers aren't going to be a really crisp edge so I'm not too worried about being overly precious with it. I just want a rough guide to see where I need to keep to when I'm doing my embroidery. So the key to gain a neat flower for me seems to be to always make sure you're coming up through the same spot. That's what gives the flower its nice neat center, I guess. Also just taking my time and making sure that each thread, each new stitch is sitting really nicely over the previous one.
one is done. All we need to do now is embroider sleeve number two. I've had such a nice time doing woolly embroidery. It's not perfect, but it's definitely fun. And yeah, I'm really glad that I filmed this video and that you came along on this project with me. I know this is quite different content from me than you're used to seeing, but I don't know. It felt like an organic next step to do more project-based videos alongside the podcast. The podcast isn't going anywhere because I love just sitting down and talking to you about my knitting. But I don't know, I never, when I started the podcast, it was always because I just wanted to connect with you and chat about what I was making, but I never wanted the podcast to become, I don't know, just me saying, look, I made this thing, look, I made this thing, isn't this nice kind of a thing. Um, that's fine, but I, I mainly want to do it just to show what I was doing and to, connect with you and also hopefully maybe inspire you to try something new and I don't know get your creative juices flowing and also show you the mistakes along the way not just the pretty final things but also the whole progress of making something and that things don't always go to plan um as you can see there aren't any what were they called french knots something knots <laughs> embroidered knots in the middle of my flowers you know things don't always go to plan things might look terrible at the end and they don't always work but I think that's part of making and a big part of learning a new skill and learning to make your own clothes is to kind of mess things up a lot and just learn from those mistakes so I'd love to show more of that here on the channel, more project-based videos. Um, so if you enjoyed this content from me, please do let me know. I'd love to keep doing videos like this alongside the podcast. So if you're interested in that, because I always want to make content that you like to see, um, please do let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a big thumbs up because um, that really helps. But if you didn't enjoy it, don't feel obliged. You can also give it a big stinky thumbs down as well. And if you want to see more videos from me, be sure to hit subscribe. And yeah, I hope I see you back here next time. And I had fun. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. And I'll see you again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.